when I was there at 6, 630. In the, the whole time they were selling us these bricks. Yeah, everything was okay. Everything was okay. So they finally started letting some of us in there and I'm trying to tell them the name, but they just really wasn't responding. You know, to, okay, but he's such and such, he's such and such, or he in room this or room that. They wasn't really responding. So See, then when they finally came and told us, oh, Lord, that was just. See, she was, I, we were still outside for a while. We finally got her and my daddy yet. And we were still outside. There was a girl standing next to me. And she said, my brother's not go back. Can y'all please let him in? They let her in. So when we got it, we finally got in there. On the news, it was already somebody pronounced dead. On the news. So, that had to be about maybe, maybe almost four, four o'clock. So, I'm thinking it's her brother, the girl that was standing next to me. It was Brandon. It was my brother the whole the time. time. So we got to the family of Brandon Williams, and we consoled them and tried to encourage them to keep the faith. It wasn't long after that that the coroner came and talked to us and told us that uh, Brandon Williams had deceased. Immediately we had to gather ourselves because as uh, chaplains and as men of God we had to break this to the family uh, where they would be able to handle it without becoming uh, too emotional. It was sad because we went around the corner and I seen Brandon ID. I used to live here in Niles. So I knew a driver license from here. And I seen his name on it. And Pastor Williams looked and seen it too. And the nurse said, can y'all let the family know? And I look at him like, no, that's you guys job. I'm off duty, that's no. Um, Pastor Williams spoke with, I believe, was um, one of the family members and basically was telling him, you know, this ain't good. He didn't come out say he's deceased. But um, me, like family member, went outside as well. And I knew he didn't understand what Pastor Williams said. And I was like, you have to be strong for your family because Brandon is gone. And they wanted me to identify that body. I knew Joanne couldn't do it. I knew Tierra and none of them could do it. The you know, only thing, thing I could do is like, Lord, give me the strength to do this. Go, we got to go and get it over with. I told, I told him yes. I knew it. As we was walking, Walking to the room, and everything. I go in. I see my cousin laying on that bed. And I just told him, Yeah, this is him. This is him. This is my cousin. And so we had to go back and tell the family, you know, got to let Joanne and Ricky know. My Brandon brother, he seen me walking down. He asked me, I'm hearing him ask me the question. I couldn't say nothing. I couldn't say a thing. He kept asking me. Hey, got close to him, he hit me. And police, you know, they tried to grab him. I'm like, no, you know, don't, don't do it. No, I needed that. So I can, so I words come out of my mouth, you know, cause I couldn't say a thing. That night, I ain't gonna never forget that. I ain't gonna never forget the look, how Brandon look on that, on that bed. Laying there. See, Unbelievable. All I remember seeing somebody on the floor and it was crying and yelling and one of the officers telling her to shut up. I remember that 
and I couldn't find her because they had pushed her out of the room. I remember when they first came out, they told, said it, and it felt like my whole soul just came out of my body. My dad said I ran into him and hit his chest and was screaming, Daddy, Daddy, no, they took him, they took him. But I don't remember none of that. Like, it was like I was, my soul was watching me. Like, I could remember seeing that, but I don't remember saying that. Family and friends honored 27-year-old Brandon Williams today in Niles. Ten others were hurt. Williams' service included heartfelt songs, prayers, and sermons. Those who attended were white or lime green in his honor. to the world helps families almost like us yeah. uh, that they lost somebody to gun violence or any tragic incident. Uh, we try to do grieving uh, comfort kits. Or Thanksgiving baskets. We did, Thanks, we did that. We mm -hmm. hosted a gun violence concert. Mm -hmm. we, just, we just try to pay back to the community and other communities around. I've known Brandon Williams for 15 plus years. I met him in junior high and he was probably one of the most outstanding peers that I knew. Lining himself up in the mother car. Yeah, Only Brandon. Yeah, <laughs> right. One of the fondest things that I could remember about Brandon, and I liked the most, was that he was always he was an enthusiast. You know, he was enthused about life. He you know, never relented on anything. If he put his hands on it or, or put his mind to it, you know, he just made it work. You have a good guy. It's a long time. I must see because like, uh, it's a little one. Yeah. And, yeah, it's very nice people. Yeah. And, uh, so my, one of their friends gave it to me and I've been, I haven't took it off. I should 
she don't like looking at pictures, but she keeps that on. Yeah, but I'm gonna I keep this one on. Um, this is a picture I had made of a bunch of pictures through the years of me and Brandon. It's like all different stages of our lives and stuff like that. Sorry. You took the heart of a lot of people. And it's something that'll never be, it'll never be fixed. It'll always be broken. I'll probably never be right behind this. There's somebody I'm with every day. Still to the day I wake up every day not knowing what I'm gonna do. You know what I'm saying? I got children that I gotta live for. But it, sometimes you, you feel like, it, is it even worth it? Sometimes I feel like I wanna see my brother soon. Just have crazy thoughts sometimes, but I, I just wanna see him again, you know? An innocent, an innocent person. You are hurting so many people. You're not just taking that, that person life, you're taking a, a, a whole family. How would you feel, you know what I'm saying? If this happened to your close, or you know, somebody close to you, a loved one that you love so dearly, you know, and you spend a lot of time in your life with, you know, how would you feel? What would that, what, what state of mind would that put you in? You know, it, it ain't fair that somebody got took that didn't even deserve it. And to this day, June 23rd will live in history in the city of South Bend because of the mass shooting that many folk never really acknowledge as being one of the horrific events in this city's history. I always say I can't imagine. I tell them I don't want you to imagine. This, this is the worst nightmare anybody has to go through in their life. This is one thing you can fight through uh, maybe cancer or disease, you can fight through uh, people fighting you or people uh, messing with you, but death of a child, that's the hardest thing you will ever, ever go through. You don't want that because you don't raise that child, you don't carry that child, and that's a hard thing to do.